before we get started, show of hands, entrepreneurs. Come on, raise them up. There are a bunch of VCs up here, so raise your hands. All right. Um, folks raising money are going to raise money in the future. Plans. Seriously, that's it? All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys, you three over there. Um, raising money can be intimidating, right? Talking to a venture capitalist can be intimidating. Here in our region, we don't have very many of them. So there's not a lot of difference between them. There's not a big differentiator between uh, uh, one VC to another here, right? You go other places in the world where there are uh, ecosystems that have plenty of investors in it and you start uh, seeing a huge you know, differentiating thing between one investor and another, right? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but what I really want to try to convey is the venture investor is motivated by a lot of the same things uh, you guys as entrepreneurs are motivated by. They have customers, which is you guys, and you guys have to understand that. They have uh, investors, which is the limited partner that invests in their firm and they have a reputation and they have a lot of the same dynamics that you guys are going through all right so i'll start us off by uh, uh, introducing uh people up here with me brian runs uh, tech stars out of uh, chicago uh, before that he ran ok cupid labs so he comes from a very operator uh, uh, kind of a background and got into uh investments and tech stars and all Um, on my right, I'm going to leave best for last. On my right, Marlon. Uh, Marlon is a super interesting VC. Um, what was the award you recently won uh, in Silicon Valley? Remind me. The four, the f it was 40 under 40? I was making sure it wasn't 30 under 30. <laughs> All right. 40 under 40, uh, I think most interesting VCs to uh, watch for. Uh, he was with Intel Capital uh, and left recently to form his own fund uh, that focuses on culture. Uh, it's a super interesting uh, thesis. Uh, he's got an incredible, uh, uh, incredible array of, 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 of companies you've invested in in a very, very short amount of time. I think seven investments. All right, uh, great uh, uh, LPs, including Google, uh, some fantastic work. Um, Ro okay, well, you gave him. <laughs> Rosa runs a, a private investment operation out of Texas and is also on the board of uh, the uh, Texas uh, Angels Group, Central Texas Angel Groups. And she does uh, um, direct investments and also um, li limited partner investments. So she invests in a lot of the VC firms that in turn invest in us entrepreneurs, right? So um, let's get kind of kicked off. Um, why don't we start with you, Brian? Expectations of a, a VC in terms of where, where do you, s uh, <clears throat> um, when you're approaching a VC, you understand that they have people to report to just like everybody else. Yeah. You understand that they have cycles in their fund and times and amounts of money that have to be allocated and all that stuff. How can that help an entrepreneur um, either uh, understand a, 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 a VC better? Yeah, I mean, I think, um Every good entrepreneur should do the research on their investors, right? You should find out uh, what kinds of companies they've invested in, what stage, um, what kind of check sizes they are, they're used to writing, um, and see if that fits with where you're at, right? Um, if you're at the angel seed stage and you approach a fund that typically writes $3 million checks, like there's probably not good alignment there. So um, I think in general, most venture investors that, that Techstars companies come in contact with, um, you know, it's 
it's pretty simple to understand what they're looking for, but hard to figure out you know when and and under what conditions they will make a decision because a lot of it's instinct and trained uh, trained gut you know sort of and and just a learned what are the pattern recognition is something you hear a lot about um, but you know in general you have to be ready to show off your team have some momentum have some traction and and then tailor where you're at to the right investor and make sure that you need the capital that they and the and the advice and the stage that, that they're at or is that yeah yeah how about you, Marlon? What what keeps you up at night when you're thinking about your new fund? Um, I don't know that anything is keeping me up at night right now. Um, in the past, um, I've worked with companies that um, you know go through through their down cycles, and when you're Basically, as a VC, what you do is you build relationships with, with entrepreneurs and then with companies, right? And um, for the good ones, you get really close to them, right? So you end up caring about what happens to that company, what happens to the employees, and what happens to their families. So when I've had experiences where, you know, some one or two of the companies that I've invested in went through a patch where things weren't going as smoothly as expected. And um, what keeps me up at night is helping them through that that hard point in the, in the cycle of, of that company, right? So, uh, for instance, I had a, a, um, a hardware company that was um, had a down cycle in terms of uh, financing. Um, they they burned through capital a little bit faster than they than they should have. Um, a lot of a lot of things came into play. It wasn't that they were just mismanaging the um, the company or the or the money. Um, but they were in in the situation that they that they were in, um, so I found myself in a situation where I'm going to the factory, um, actually rolling up my sleeves and um, and volunteering on the line to to get to get the product out and doing stuff like that. I'm I'm on the phone with uh, with banks, uh, trying to get um, you know uh, uh, loans for for the company. I'm um, you know. Um, uh, you know, working with other investors to try to get um, additional capital into the company a little bit earlier than than um, what was expected. Uh, so all I'm doing all these things because I care about what happens to this company and what happens to to the employees within within the company. So that's, that's actually really important because uh, when you think about choosing your investors, if if you have the ability to have multiple investors. Uh, one important criteria is to figure out whether they'll be able to really help you when things don't go well. And if you don't have choice in investors, you still need to know what's going to happen with your investor that you end up getting, what's going to happen. So talking to other investments, talking to entrepreneurs that have worked with that VC angel investor before is really important before you take the money. Because some investors are not as good as Marlin and will be pain in the ass to work with when things are, things are bad. Yeah, so Marlin trying to work as hard as an entrepreneur, that's kind of awesome. But Brian uh, also makes an awesome point. I know from personal experience here in the region, not all of the investors will work as hard as, as, as uh, some other folks. And it's actually kind of easy to find out who does and who doesn't. Ask, ask. Like I've personally gotten investments from a lot of different investors here in Egypt. And I've never once been asked by an entrepreneur what my opinion of that investor is, right? So try to do that, try to ask. It's just like, uh, you know, getting involved in any long-term relationship. You're going on no. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, one thing I'll add is that um, I view venture capital as a two-way marketplace, essentially, with, with uh, VC in the middle, right? You have the limited partners on, on one side and they're supplying uh, capital or, or dollars into the venture fund and the venture fund, and then on the other side, you have entrepreneurs that they're also supplying a product, which is whatever the solution is, um, into, the, into the venture fund. And the venture fund is kind of putting it all, putting it all together. So you don't go into a marketplace um, thinking that you have, no, uh, you have no agency or you have no power, right? You go into a marketplace thinking that you're going to pick the best uh, supplier if you're the customer or um, you know, that you have something to bring. Same, same applies with venture capital. You go into it, um, as Kareem said, it's a relationship, right? 
you want to understand what um, how you're going to be valued in a relationship, and you want to understand the value that you're going to get back out of a relationship. So just remember that you have some agency in this process. Well, if I could pick up on that, I think that um, uh, a venture capitalist, venture capitalists tend to display behavior, which I think to a lot of entrepreneurs seems very strange. That people don't understand why they are doing what they're doing. Um, and uh, I think this has to do with the fact that their primary job is to make money for their LPs so that LPs will keep giving them money so they can keep being venture capitalists. And venture capitalists um, uh, adopt a strategy that they think will work best for that. And they, they convince their LPs that they have the right strategy. Now, Marlon has adopted a very nice strategy, partially because he's a nice person, and also partially because his belief is that the more you can support entrepreneurs and the more you can help them through difficulty, the better your returns will be. Um, but each, you know, venture capitalist and venture capital firm has their own set of strategies and they'll employ them over and over again and that comes down to the reputational part which is how do people behave and how do these um, investors behave under stressful situations. The other thing that venture capitalists do is they're really slow and that's very frustrating to entrepreneurs. It drives them crazy for obvious reasons because they're in a hurry to get, you know, to their business. However, one thing to understand is that Time is really more information to an investor. And so there's really no incentive for an investor to move very, very quickly unless they feel like they have to because they're in some sort of competitive situation because every day that goes by in a way gives them more information about what's going on. And so if you see people sort of playing it out and playing it out, it's a, it's a form of information gathering that's incredibly frustrating to entrepreneurs. So I'll just make those two points. Um, sure, uh, I think of myself as a nice guy, but uh, that that ex <laughs> that <laughs> yeah that that example that I gave was was with a company that I've been working very closely with that took you know took took direction. Um, well and and was doing all the right things right that's that's an example of a good company a, a good investment right so you want to work to make to see that investment in that company succeed there are other scenarios where you know um, the entrepreneurs or the CEO will go against the advice at every at every turn that the board or his or uh, his or her investors um, give to them um, when you're dealing with a company like that at, at you know, some point you just cut your you cut your losses and say, you know, there's there's not a whole lot that I can do here because you're not meeting me halfway. So it's a uh, it's a balance between um, being nice and um, you know doing doing what is what is right and what is necessary. So the, the interesting question probably is how do you deal with the investors that are slow, right, and who have no sort of incentive to make quick decisions, right? So so at TechStars generally we we teach the entrepreneurs to think about it like enterprise sales. So um, when selling to a large enterprise, they also have no incentive to get things done, but you can start to create incentives um, and you can manage them and you can follow up and you can build the relationship. And you should think about raising capital from venture capitalists as, I mean, we've heard the word relationship a bunch, but you have to develop that relationship. So, so when you first talk to them, you know, there's this old adage like, Ask for money and you'll get advice. Ask for advice and you might get money, right? So, so start by asking for advice and forming that relationship with the venture capitalist, and do that with a large number of people, as big of a pile as you can get. And you should, you're not constrained to people that are just in the region, as it turns out. You can reach out and get advice from anyone in the world and start to build those relationships anywhere in the world, and you should. If you're not thinking about it as a sales process, like as a funnel, like, oh, I'm gonna start with 100 at the top and whittle that way down to 15 people that I have strong relationships with, which I think three I can close, then you're making a mistake. You should be you should be thinking about it in terms of building that funnel, and that's the best way to, for entrepreneurs to manage it um, over time. Creating incentive. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So so um, I think there's two good incentives for for VCs to get motivated. Um, maybe three. There's one. There's fear of sort of missing the boat. So as you develop momentum as a startup. Um, and, and, it, and as you develop that relationship, you should be getting your investors more and more excited. And there's a point where you'll be getting enough people excited in your pipeline that 
people will start to worry, oh man, I might not, this is a great deal, I might not get into it, right? Um, but you need to have, you need to be courting 15, 20 investors to get there. Um, so that's first. I think second of all is just um, general excitement and momentum building for your startup, right? And and as people get closer to you, as they form a relationship with you, they want you to succeed more and they'll realize that you need capital. And as you become friends, partners, whatever with your, with your in potential investors, um, they will want your company to do better, which will lead them to invest. Um, and the third is probably just if you can paint a really attractive return scenario, um, which is probably the hardest to do at the early stages, right? But I, I think there's a certain sort of relationship and involvement um, that, that uh, Marlon's talking about, but that happens when you do start to get excited about a business and you can see its potential and you're, you're, you're uh, actually feeling that you can be helpful to this business or helpful to the entrepreneur, then you have sort of a, um, you know, venture capitalists are people, so, so the more that they buy into the excitement around your business, the more likely they are to move quickly just because they're excited about things and uh, that says uh, you know the return scenario really matters um, but I think just the excitement and engaging the the investor sort of gut about the opportunity is probably the most effective a lot of first-time entrepreneurs come and talk to VCs almost like it's applying for a bank loan like I'm gonna show up we're gonna have a meeting you're gonna decide whether you give me a check or not and then we're done it's not like that at all like it's a long-term game it should take you six months to raise capital if you're doing it well Right, like, because you're actually then meeting enough investors across the board. Um, so it takes a long time, and you have to court those relationships and build them. I think there's sort of a uh, a a, um, a quality of, of venture capitalists think of themselves as a person who's going to be able to spot that diamond in the rough and work with the people and be really helpful, and it becomes this amazing huge global domination business and that is you know that would feel so good and that sort of makes your reputation as a venture capitalist so from a motivational perspective sort of you know keep that in mind it's sort of a star making um, attitude I was gonna, the, the other thing just occurred to me the best way to get venture capital is not to need it right <laughs> uh, that's true of like any form of capital so the better you can make your business uh, the, the easier it'll be for you to raise capital if you can get to profitability then it'd be much easier. Yes, I think so. Can you? It's a it's a factor of time. Um, you know, if uh, if if your company is farther farther along, and then you go and you have you 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 have that meeting, and you can show you can show trend lines. So you know, my revenue has been growing by X percentage month over month, or my user acquisition has been growing you know, by X percentage month over month, then it's, uh, it's usually a, sh a shorter cycle to, um, to, to getting, that, getting those investment dollars, assuming that, that those Xs are high. Um, sometimes, particularly at, at the early, early stages of companies, you don't have that right away. So that's, that's when it becomes even more important to, to spend more time, build a relationship, and continue to communicate, right? So month one, this is where my, um, uh, my user acquisition numbers are month two they're here month three they're here and we can start to see the see, see the trend line if it's attractive and you continue to um, like the, per, the the team that um, that you're meeting with you'll end up making the investment so it's a it is a time game we got five so I think we have five minutes left for questions now right All right so um, questions Five, four, five more minutes and then questions. Well, does anybody have a question at this point? We can just kind of go ahead. Yeah, yell it out. Yeah, there's it's a small group. Yell it out. For the last day and today, everyone is saying it's like you have to start up your business, make money, and then capital will come to you. This is what I understood right. I don't think capital will just show up at your door, right? No, I know, but it's like no one is... <laughs> I wish that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think he's uh, referring yeah. more to, like, McLaren, like, you know, you need the, the traction and the, and, and the revenue before you can really yeah. raise. Profit? Yeah, yeah, so you have to show something, right? Revenue is one, is, is one metric, 
right? But there are other there are other um, metrics that, that that you can be tracking that are important to your to your business. Uh, you know, you got to think about and uh, your VC as a as a business, right? Um, I have uh, business partners in in my limited partners, my investors, right? That are looking for a return on their capital, and they're going to expect me to make decisions based on facts. Um, it, to the extent that I can, I, I can get them. So as an entrepreneur, your job is to provide me with some evidence that um, uh, that suggests that your company is going to go, you know, up into the right. But it's like it's, it's a clear advice. It's like don't start talking to anyone before you start up your business, right? No, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Not, uh, not just like selling an idea. Part um, th that's what we talked about before, right? Part of Part of developing that relationship should be if at the early stages. You can go to a good investor and say, "Hey, I'm going to be starting this business. I'm thinking about here's where I'm here's my strategy. Here's how I'm going to approach the problem. Here's how I think I'm going to do customer acquisition. You know, what do you think?" It's a little harder to get meetings in those scenarios, but like if you can get them, those are great opportunities to build a relationship where they get to know how you think, you get to see how they react to your concept, and that establishes that trajectory. Like. Because they're gonna, you're gonna say, oh, I think I'm gonna launch the app in a month, and we're gonna, we're gonna get a thousand users, whatever. And then if you come back next month and you're like, yeah, we launched it in two weeks, and we got five thousand users, oh, you have like a trajectory now, and they start to get, build that excitement. If you wait, they don't know where you started, how long it took to get there, all that fun stuff. Yeah, it, it's kind, it kind of goes both ways, right? So, just to give you some perspective, so uh, my new firm, we've done seven deals since May. Right. To get to those seven deals, we um, seriously reviewed about 250 companies. Right. There are three partners in, in, in my firm, and we have a venture partner and an associate. That's keeping us very, very busy. Right. So I don't have a ton of time to, to, to meet with, with entrepreneurs that are thinking about doing something. Um, I'll, I'll probably punt on those meetings until, until later just because I don't have, I want to, but I don't have the, the actual um, number of hours in the day. So I, me personally, I would prefer to, to, to speak with you, not when you're thinking about doing something, but when, you're act, when you have actually started to do it. Um, and it could be early days, you having started uh, doing it, but I, 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 I'm not gonna um, give up the cycles for someone that's considering an idea. But this is also a little bit of like finding the right investor for your stage, right? And so, at the earliest stages, maybe the idea is start, start to court angel investors, not necessarily VCs, and build up your angel network. And I would meet with them, maybe not before you start, but when you just are getting your product launched, when you have the first version, when you're when you've completed the first sale, when you've got the first thousand, hundred, whatever users, those things. I, I think that's a that's a good point about knowing where you are in your stage and what type of investors. The, the people you're targeting um, as investors understand where they invest. What are, they'll, they'll probably know exactly, I need to have X kind of revenue. I need, you know, some people will invest later. So it doesn't mean you can't talk to everybody, but if you display a real understanding that, hey, I'm too early for you and you're looking for these indicators, any conversation you have will be more productive and lay a better groundwork for the future. And, there could be a whole panel for hours about you know fund dynamics and where people are in their fund and um, other things that influence investor behavior but just generally finding out as much about how people like to invest makes you able to tailor the conversation better I also I mean this panel is called hacking venture right so so I think you as the entrepreneurs should be as aggressive as you can be at trying to build those relationships let Marlin tell you no instead of you not even reaching out to Marlin in other words as part of that sales funnel, you're going to do a bunch of like lead gen and trying to cold calling and whatever. Some of which will not pan out, but you have to do it, right? He, he and won't don't be give mad up before you, you talk to the yeah. the investor. And, and so, if you do reach out in the, in those early stages, just make sure you do it through someone that I really trust, right? So if if, if they, t you know, if if one of these guys um, or or gal up here tells me that you need to meet this entrepreneur because he or she is so dynamic that this person is going to be a success one day. You need to build a relationship with them. I'm gonna, uh, I'll find the time to, to do that, right? It might be a half an hour meeting instead of an hour meeting, but I'll find the time to, to do that because of where it came in from. 
So referrals are really valuable. They're also probably the most frustrating thing to new entrepreneurs. Um, because like when I was a first time entrepreneur, I heard this like, oh, fine, you know, just get a referral to me from someone who I trust. You're like, okay, how the hell do I do that? Like, what? I don't have time for that. <laughs> I gotta go get customers and shit, right? So um, the best way to do it is to, is to look at their existing investments and find founders who they've invested in. And founders will almost always take meetings with you, right? So, so assuming you're not that their first investment ever, which by the way, if you are their first investment, they should be your last investor, not your first investor. So um, find other founders like Kareem or other people and meet with Kareem and bother the fuck out of Kareem and say, I want, I want 10 minutes of your time to have coffee at 7 a.m. <laughs> or whatever, go to wherever he's at and get aggressive, right? And don't be afraid to like really build that funnel of people in those relationships. Because you really, you have to be super aggressive if you're gonna get it done. I agree wholeheartedly with that, except for the 7 a.m. thing. How about another question? Yeah, you guys. To be a million dollar business, if I need a few thousand bucks, build my project that's not very profitable, what type of investor should I be looking for? So the product itself doesn't have the potential to be yeah. like huge and not the, the next probably stage. not a, a venture firm, a typical venture firm. Yeah, so the way, just like, the way they uh, kind of work is it's all right for six, eight of the 10 investments they're gonna make to fail, but that one or two has to be huge to make up for everything else. Right, so everyone they they invest in has to have the potential to be really, really big. So if I want a medium-sized business and they want to fund for this, which type of investor should I go for? Angel investors or um, friends, probably family, friends, yeah. family, that kind of stuff. It, it's You'll find more of those investors, investors here in Egypt than you will venture capitalists. And angels, if they're in the sector, like if you're selling something to doctors, go talk to a bunch of doctors, and they may say, "Yeah, I want to put money in because I want to use this." part of my practice or whatever. But, but in general, it's gonna be harder to get more sophisticated investors involved in smaller businesses. They're just, you have to be able to pay back the fund on an individual deal. Yeah, thank you. But just to put it in perspective, let me walk you through uh, an exercise, right? Let's say you have a, a $50 million fund as, as a venture capitalist, right? Um, and as Brian said, you're looking for, every deal that you do, you're looking for um, it to have the ability to at least return $50 million to, to, to your investors, right? So at the angel stage, uh, or at the seed stage, let's say um, you get 10% ownership stake in this business, right? And the market that you're, um, uh, that this business is in is, or the, the TAM, the um, total addressable market, is uh, 500, uh, 500 million, right? I only get 10% of that. So, you know, so sure, that, that might at least return the fund. But what's going to happen is there's going to be a Series A, which is the next round, and then there's going to be a Series B, and then there's going to be a Series C. At the end of all that, I probably own between two and five percent of the company, given given the the, the um, this particular uh, VC's model. So now that 500 uh, million dollar market is way too small for me to be able to return. Uh, the investment that my that my LPs made, so I'm not going to um, to, to entertain that that as an investment. Right. Another question. Uh, question. That's really interesting. You want to do this? Well, you just did it, so and it might be interesting. Oh, you did? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Can I can I ask you is can I ask you what size of venture fund or if this is a, in this region I'm assuming venture fund? No, not necessarily. But uh, for example, in the case of Morning, we have the importance of Well, what an LP is looking for, um, for a potential investor to have thought through is, you know, 
how um, what sort of expertise do I have do I have a, a industry focus and do I have the right background of the partners in that industry to understand am I a regional focus fund do I have some sort of competitive advantage in my understanding of the market um, do do how am I going to get proprietary deal flow? In other words, am I very connected into the ecosystem that I'm trying to get deals into? Do I know a lot of entrepreneurs? Do I know a lot of successful founders? Do I, am I going to see the best deals? Am I going to be somebody that the best entrepreneurs are going to want to come to and get investment from? And so you're sort of trying to craft a, a scenario that speaks to the idea that you can get outsized returns. So you're talking about the op overall economic opportunity in the market. You're talking to your particular expertise and your ability to understand where the better opportunities are in their market, what background you have that's specific to that to bring, what partners you can bring on, and you know what your reputation is. Track record, usually when raising a fund, is key, whether that be as an angel investor, whether it be as part of a larger firm earlier, um, something that shows that you have good investment ability and furthermore the ability to um, do the job after making the investment, be a good board member, shepherd the investment towards an exit. I don't know if that helps. In, in this region specifically? Um, I think if I were an investor here in the region, I would, I would, um, or, or if I were a, a large um, investment firm here in the region, I would view venture capital in this region about like I would view um, venture capital um, in in the United States for a United States investor. In other words, an important part of an overall you know asset allocation, if that makes any sense. If you're asking the question of how, as say, a U.S. investor, I would view venture capital here, um, I think a lot of investors are very um, hesitant to invest in venture capital in this area just because they don't understand exactly what's going on. They don't understand what the opportunity really looks like, and they don't understand what firms are here with what approach that they could invest through. But um, you know, venture capital is about taking outsized risk to get outsized returns. And so when you look at markets that are outside of um, Silicon Valley, outside of the established venture capital markets, as an investor you look at that and you say, okay, there's extra risk there, there's a different risk there. There's probably also the ability to get really outsized returns. It's just how do you access that? That's time. All right. Well, that's, that's all the time we have. Um, thank you guys for having us. Thank you guys for being here.